everybody. This is Jason Eagle, your Natural Health Authority, with another Healing Matters podcast. And <clears throat> today we're talking about digestion, poor digestion, good digestion. Um, a lot of times people have an issue in their body. I got kidneys I want to work on. I got gallbladder I want to work on. Uh, and that's going to take a while. It's going to take a while to fix. However, poor digestion, you can fix immediately with the very next meal. Um, and then today we're also going to talk about the miracle of this HCL detox therapy, um, especially going back to the 1930s. And then redone, I'm looking at some studies that were redone back in 19, or I'm sorry, 2011, and uh, also very recently. And they reconfirmed this, that what they found back in the 1930s of HCL therapy using to fight infections, and in particular, um, this uh, hydrochloric acid for untreatable, untreatable bacterial infection. Um, th the things where they now say they created the superbugs were the antibiotic resistant strains, um, MRSA, um, th the flesh eating uh, bacterials, uh, viruses, hydrochloric acid. Now back in the 1930s, they were talking about injecting it. And, and this is also, um, and, and also taking it internally. Today, we're talking about taking it internally um, to fix your digestion, which will eventually get into the bloodstream and then go to those places. But um, the studies were shown on um, when you had, for instance, a wound. Um, so let's say it, you got shot, you were in the war and, and a really bad shot, like a gut shot, where now you've secreted poop juices into the wound and it's going to get infected. And, and Or then when we have these really bad infections like the bed sores or um, tumors that have sat there for a long time, become kind of rotted, um, the, the stuff that's really, really bad. Um, and then also too, when you're talking about like, for instance, let's say the lungs, the lungs where you get infection in the lungs. So with this latest virus where it's not the virus that is in the lungs, it's the bacteria that then the, the lungs turn into a swamp and the people get multiple bacterial infections. And, and it's not just one, when you're just saying, oh, it's virus or it's bacteria, it's an orgy, it's everybody. It's a whole slew of different life forms. And as you get weaker and weaker and older and older and less energy from your food, because that's where energy comes from, from a living being, which is baby grows on the umbilical cord and is feeding off of the mother, and then eventually comes out and feeds off the mother and then is given food and and then eats things and then learns how to feed itself. And that's how we grow and that's how we live and everything like that. So it's everything. Digestion is the living form and bad digestion is not good because it's a sign you're going down and it's a early warning sign. What are some of the top things that people talked about um, is how do you know you have bad digestion? One, you get sleepy after eating. Norm, think about when you were a kid, you ate and then you didn't even eat the whole plate. The little kid was like just raring to go and and um, and they ate when they were, were full and uh, or stopped when they were full and they, they ate enough and ate and picked what they wanted. And, and now you got picky eaters that have to be stimulated or, or you know, managed to be, you know, eat your broccoli and stuff like that. But um, instinct really led them and they knew what they were doing. And um, so, but they felt good. Um, bloating after eating, sinusy after eating, pain in the stomach after eating, um, inability to digest protein well, um, like we would like to say is like the pork farts, right? Or the when people, a lot of times people don't digest pork very well or other types of meats um, or intestinal gas, um, but also belching and burping up. You know, people that are used to doing that all the time that's, that's not normal. I mean, a, a good d meal, when you know you're digesting well, it goes down, it feels good, and it doesn't make a whole lot of noise, and it doesn't cause any pain, it doesn't cause any bloating, doesn't cause any sinuses, doesn't cause you to get stuffed up, doesn't cause you to get a runny, runny nose, doesn't cause you to start coughing. These are other things. When you can tell that people have um, digestive problems is they'll start coughing um, and um, get into a coughing fit. Even people that, for instance, say, oh, I swallowed wrong, but they do it a lot. It's bad digestion. And then afterwards you follow them, um, you know, diarrhea. Uh, so the digestion is also elimination too, which is, you know, people get diarrhea, people get, um, 
you know, not only belchy, but also throw up -y. You know, think about like the colicky baby. Um, another thing would be weight gain at the stomach. And when people, when we say stomach, the physical stomach, the organ of the stomach is actually up here. It's very kind of close to your chest, close to your heart. That's why they call it heartburn. Now, most people, when they say that, oh, my belly hurts, my tummy belly hurts, that's their intestines. It's not actually their stomach. But there's other organs in there, and you can actually have pain coming from a pancreas, pain coming from a spleen. You can have pain coming from uh, your liver. You can have pain coming, typically the pain from the gallbladder is on the right side, right under the right breast, um, on the right chest, uh, in those ribs, and it can radiate around the back. It can go down or it can just kind of stay right there. Uh, but typically on the right side, if it's both sides under the ribs, that's typically the liver, or that is also where the, the ascending or transverse colon is. And so that could be more of you know, where the pain is, is indicative of what part of the digestion process that we can have. So the digestion thing is, yeah, you smell food, you start to salivate, that produces enzymes and enzymes are what breaks it down. Teeth is what breaks it down, but enzymes are what break it down. Teeth makes it into, you know, chewable chunks, which is called a bolus. And then we swallow that, goes down the esophagus, kakunk, plumps into this little pouch of a stomach. The stomach is a muscle that starts churning and churning and it's basically doing laundry. You're doing the old timey laundry where you're squeezing, you know, the food and, and think about towels and, and that it's, it's mixing it up, but it's also squirting in the soap and, and, and juices. Now the stomach, now soap is the gallbladder, that's bile, literally it's soap. So it's not time for soap yet. <laughs> the stomach is hydrochloric acid. The hydrochloric acid is these, these little, there's pores inside the stomach. If you look at the inside of the stomach, there are pores that, you know, kind of look like sweat glands, sweat pores, little holes, and it releases hydrochloric acid. And so it mixes hydrochloric acid with that. Now hydrochloric acid breaks down, it burns and it breaks down protein, but you have a special lining on your stomach and we have, have valves at the top and at the bottom that holds it together, twists off and it, and it keeps it right inside there. And then when it's time, when it's been mixed enough, then the bottom one opens and then it goes down into what's called this little J pouch, the duodenum. And that's where then the gallbladder has a tube that squirts some soap in there. Because if there's any fat that's in that food, then it's, it's, it needs to be broken down. Hydrochloric acid does not necessarily break fat down. Um, a fat, and when I say breaking a fat down, fat has to be mixed into water because you're mostly water and your bloodstream is water and your brain is <laughs> water and, and fat. And so fat has to go places that water is and water and oil don't mix. They're, they're opposed unless water has, or unless the fat has a chaperone, you know, soap has an emulsifier that breaks it into a big glob into a little glob. Okay, so that's part of the process. And then as food starts to go in, there's other organs that squirt in other uh, juices. So the pancreas is insulin and protease and, and there's other, and the liver squirts some stuff in there, not just from the gallbladder. Um, the intestines squirt stuff in there. So as it goes along, like a car wash, like I like to say, it's, it's, as you go through the car wash, you're, there's different brushes and squirting and washing and rinsing and squirting and scrubbing and different things happen. And then until by the time your body has used all these different processes, as well as the muscles of your stomach and intestines to squeeze this food and literally suck stuff out of it and then spit stuff back in, suck stuff out of it and then spit stuff back in. And what it's spitting back in to the intestines is what's a waste product. And then that's what then gets the juices get sucked out and, and any of the toxic juices um, then get converted into urine. Um, and then the solid matter gets converted into feces and poop and that's pooped out. But the hydrochloric acid that is mixed, same thing with bile. Now our body secretes this stuff and it travels along the way and people go, well then how come I'm not like burning, you know, as it comes out? Because what happens is as it goes through your digestive tract, 
it gets reabsorbed. Your body is a recycler. Your body is this beautiful recycler, and it recycles this stuff and puts it back into those organs of where they came from. And so that's why when we're talking about pH and in the stomach for sure should be acidic. But then as it gets into the in lower intestine, then it turns more um, alkaline. Then it goes the other way. Well, how does it do that? It does that because the your body reabsorbs the hydrochloric acid in. And so the hydrochloric acid actually goes through your bloodstream. There are times when your body secretes hydrochloric acid without food, or the hydrochloric acid that came from food, then goes back into, but it goes through your bloodstream. And so literally your body is doing this injecting of hydrochloric acid into the body. So let's go back to, so not only is it used for digestion, and you know the most important thing about what we swallow. Stuff that we swallow is not only food, but stuff that we swallow has a potential of having bad stuff on it. You know, sanitize and wash your hands and you can't ever really fully wash because there's stuff that tag teams into stuff. You know, every year people get um, horrible E. coli from strawberries and from lettuce and stuff. You remember years of recall? That's because people that are in the field are pooping and, and wiping their butt with their hands or getting it on their hands and then touching the food. And that's where it comes from. And sometimes it also comes from the fertilizers and stuff like that, that it's it's not been broken down a lot, but usually it's human stuff. And if that, so that means you wash it, you may not wash it good enough. And if you're sensitive enough, and what is a sensitive enough person? The person that they say, oh, be careful, that person needs that, you know, that person can get really sick. It's because they don't have hydrochloric acid. Because the first line of defense is the hydrochloric acid that is in the stomach is to not only digest the food, but primarily it is like um, the TSA, like it's not letting the terrorist get on the plane, right? So it's a sanitizer and it basically kills things that are not supposed to be there. So, um, you know, uh, let me combine, okay. So the hydrochloric acid, now we get into, all right, that's the main thing about not digesting your food very well is most people it's the loss of hydrochloric acid okay and um, and then we can also talk about eating bad foods and they should eat better foods you know high refined foods and crappy foods and and even if you have perfect digestion you're not going to digest that stuff very well because it's not very good so you know how do we fix these things fix your food that's for sure make better food choices I got to listen to that my, myself as well. All of us have to do that. Even though I grow my own food and harvest my own food, I also get exposed to food that's out there and, and make choices. And um, we all need to make better choices. Better choices are raw. Better choices are less uh, processed, less stuff done to them, more closer to the earth, more, you know, less additives and stuff like that. Um, so, but here's the deal is if you take a person that has low hydrochloric acid first to start with. We'll talk about some enzymes and stuff later, but usually the hydrochloric acid is the most important thing. Is I don't care how good they eat. If they eat perfectly, you know, organic and they eat this, and they're not gonna digest well. And so those are the real confusing things for a lot of people. People that when they say, oh, I changed my diet and I feel great and I lost a bunch of weight. And then their friend who was just as fat or sick as they were tries it and is like, I don't know what you're talking about. It didn't work for me. Why did it work for that person and not for the other person? Because the, the, bad, the worst thing for the person that it worked for is just their poor choices. The worst thing for the person when they made those better is they still didn't have good digestion. You still didn't have enough hydrochloric acid to start with. So hydrochloric acid can be added to your meal and you can just take it as a capsule. But let's talk a little bit about this, about the history. You know, Dr. Marshall talked about this an awful lot. Um, and it's based upon true history. True history is you go back to in the 1930s and um, in the 1930s, where, where is it? Yeah, 1930s. Um, so there was this uh, uh, basically um, even um, there was a study that was done and there was what was called the Townsend Letter that was written about that study. Okay. And the Townsend Letter was something that was sent out to uh, a whole bunch of doctors and everything. In particular, because we had gotten to the point of where untreatable 
bacterial infections were really bad. And so the, they're reminding each other of like what happened in the 1930s. In the 1930s, there was uh, the use of what's called intravenous HCL therapy, okay? So in the 1930s, medical pioneers discovered that a dilute natural source of hydrochloric acid when specifically combined with potassium. So when you, when you talk about the HCL detox, that is the HCL pills, these little white crystals, and you, you take one, two, three, or four, depending upon your weight, and the activator, which is a high natural potassium source. What they found is when you take HCL by itself, doesn't do as well as with potassium and the mineral salts. It was incredibly efficient to eliminate even serious long-standing infections. We're talking about the MRSA. We're talking about the, the bone infections, um, the stuff, the dental bone infections that comes with, uh, can be at the heart of so many people's really bad stuff is they don't know they got an old root canal or they got an old uh, dental infection or they had a tooth removed, let's say, um, a lot of bad sinus infections and as well as kind of a whole host of all kinds of stuff, including like brain stuff, can be linked to when they took your wisdom teeth out, a lot of people have curved wisdom teeth and they left a root tip. And a root tip can get left in way back in the jaw. And that can be something that is when it's left there and stuck there, it's just rotting. And it's rotting in the middle of bone, healthy bone around it. But then it starts spreading and spreading and leaching this bad stuff. So dental stuff can be a, a real um, canary in the, well, not, I wouldn't say canary in the colon. I mean, it, it's a mystery and it can be one of these things. So HCL therapy was used for these places and they, um, they injected it and they found that it kills everything that they could find. And in particular, now we're getting into one of the things that is the real worst problem of really bad long-term decades digestion problems, decades of sinus problems, decades of atherosclerosis, meaning plaque that has gotten infected. There's a lot of heart diseases related to this nanobacteria infection as well as the infection in the deposits. So these little gooey deposits that are living inside your body are a perfect living ground for this place. And your joints, as I say over and over again, when you dealing with arthritis and the big hard knuckles and the joint problems and stuff like that, you're really dealing with infection and in particular we're talking viruses and other living life forms that when they get old and they live in you a long time, parasites do this as well, they get very smart and they build what's called a polysaccharide, a sugar home, a sugar shack. They build a sugar shack. A polysaccharide means it's a, a, a long chain sugar. And it is essentially mucus. So a polysaccharide or what these things called biofilms. Biofilms, you can see that biofilms are what's the plaque that's growing in your teeth. Under the microscope, you can see it looks like literally like the, you know, slow motion photography or fast motion photography of a coral reef is it's the stuff that grows and grows and grows and it builds on the scaffolding and it's these little living life forms that make these homes that they live in. Think of coral. Coral's like living on the outside of its dead body. It produces these sugar sacs that these sugars are very much like, like mucus. And then as they get older, they become like hard mucus. You ever found that hard mucus up way in the back of your nose sometime and it, it's hard? Okay. Well, these things form inside your body. They can form inside your intestines. They can form in any site of organ. They can form inside the brain. And why the sugar sex? Why? Because sugar is natural to your body. You are made out of sugar. You build things out of sugar. So sugar is supposed to be there. So if you are a security guard walking through the mall, that person looks normal, that person looks normal, that person looks normal, like, okay, I guess you're normal. So if the old lady is carrying a purse, right, you know, you're not going to necessarily search it like you would if it was another thing. So when the immune system passes through the body, because the immune system is going through every single cell and checking everything and looking at it, when it sees a Trojan horse of living invaders living inside a a sugar sh shack, they go, ah, nothing to see here, and they walk on. 
right? And they move away. And if there was something in there, if they knew, oh crap, they're hiding in there, they can't get in there because the polysaccharide sac is something that the immune system does not destroy. The immune system does not dissolve. It can get up to there. It does not have those weapons. And so basically what happens is, is these infections that are, it's everything. That's everything, every condition that you're talking about, and especially digestion. When it's long-term digestion, you for sure have biofilms in this plaque that is formed inside your intestines as well as your whole body. Okay. So how do you get in there? Now, if your immune system could get in, if the commandos can get in there, bam, 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 they could kill it all. They could, but they can't. So what's called a biofilm buster, hydrochloric acid. And that's what they found in these 1930s, okay? So going back to this, um, uh, even serious long-standing infections were eliminated. It was safe, efficient, and easy to use. Now we're talking about taking orally, but they were doing it, injecting it. So it's stand, outstanding with the res, uh, results that the numerous medical researchers found it uncompromisingly beneficial for every condition they use it for, from tonsillitis to malaria to cancerous tumors, anything that happened in the body that was basically, you know, related to some form of other living life form that's living in it. In, in cancerous tumors, it's the same thing. There's some form of life form that started it all that your body is living around it. Without question, they realized that this HCL solution could break down the impervious polysaccharide sac surrounding virulent disease organisms such as tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is really bad in the lungs because it makes these polysaccharide sacs and they live in there and no antibiotics can get in there. It touches the outside, but it can't get in. So with almost unfailing resolution of the condition, today we know that over 99% of all infections in the body exist in these sacs, which are now known as biofilms. So 99% of all infection, 99% of the COVID, of all of these things were existing inside a polysaccharide. They're not stupid. They make these things and they hide and they hide inside our body. And then they come out when it's, when our body is weakened, they, take off and then when our body starts fighting them and they start dying, they send a signal that basically says, go back in and hide and they hide inside these pots. So that's why it's so hard to kill these things, okay? Um, in our current times, many chronically ill people, worldwide research now links to major gener degenerative diseases to underlying hitting infections. Such so a simple, efficient, safe and highly effective way to eliminate biofilms as they used in the past is now badly needed. So yes, again, just like what they understand with the COVID, when you look at this, this study, um, the HCL therapy, um, where is that, the 1930s study, that's one of the things that they also brought up, okay? They brought up, which is what they used in this uh, hydrochloric acid, what they used it for, injected it into certain places, and it healed everything. They also are referring to, this is in the 1930s, but this paper, the I think, um, was it the, I think this is the, um, which is the years of HCL therapy, okay? 1935, the years of HCL therapy. And if you go into it on page 23, they're also talking about the uses of quinine and chlorides, hydroxychloroquine. Ivermectin had not been invented yet, but ivermectin is the same type of thing, which is it kills a lot of these bacteria. But but what they're saying in here too is, is we're, we found some benefit with the quinines, the chloride that was coming from um, HCl is hydrochloride, hydrogen and a chloride fraction coming from salt. Again, also chloride is chlorine, okay? So how do you disinfect, you know, your kitchen? How do you, what's the law in every commercial kitchen? You gotta have bleach. You gotta have some form of bleach. Well, swallowing bleach is not healthy. However, injecting or swallowing something that turns into a bleach, essentially, the chloride fraction, that's what HCL is. It's safe because it's, when you swallow it, it's, and again, you produce it. You produce your own chloride. You produce your own chlorine, okay? And that's what HCL does, is HCL not only digests the food, but it sanitizes so that 
these little, you know, invaders don't get inside your guts and then get woohoo, bang, 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 and then go all over the place. And um, and that's what is happening in every single condition that we're talking about that's related to infection. And almost anything that we can talk about is related to long term, especially chronic stuff is related to this form of infection. What they say, 99% of all infections that exist in the body exist in these sacs. So what did they find out? The HCL is a biofilm buster. So when they were injecting it into the body, so when they were injecting, for instance, even uh, um, oh, antibiotics into an area, the antibiotics cannot ooze into every single area of, let's say, a tumor or, let's say, a, an infected part of the body. It can only go to what it touches, but there's underlying layers where it's like, nope, you can't get here. So even the antibiotics don't really, really work as well as this because this has the ability to dissolve those sacs. Now, when it dissolves the sacs, not only does the HCL kind of burn it and kill it, but what it does is it now opens up the way for your immune system to go in because if these polysaccharide sacs, these sugar sets are now Swiss cheese with holes in them and dissolved and now they're exposed, their bodies are exposed. Now your immune system goes, oh goody, I know exactly what to do. Now I can get it, let me at them, let me at them. And that's what happens. So taking the hydrochloric acid not only helps to restore digestion, and that's the, the best news because a person that has these bloating and all this other stuff, you take the hydrochloric acid and I, like I say for, I recommend that a person do the whole shebang, which is you wanna cover the uh, enzymes that come from your liver, your gallbladder, from your pancreas, from your intestines. So taking the digest, the digest, which is mid-meal, that's just a smattering of amylase, lipase, protease, all of hemeculase, all of these things that digest. Anything that's an ase is a, an enzyme, and enzymes are, think about all of the laundry commercials. An enzyme, it's an enzyme, digest the protein. You got blood stains, you got ketchup, you got grass stains, put this on there and then it's enzyme because that's what it does is it breaks down all of these chemical bonds of things so that now your body can take like Minecraft and go, ooh, I just want that little bit and I can blah, 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 I can make that protein, which is it can make the immune system. The immune system is made out of these proteins and your body builds these things. So your body stores cells in the immune system but it never stores enough. If there is a war, it will clone, uh, basically like the Clone Wars, and it will say, I'll build you an army, blah, 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 and I'll build you an army, and I'll tear it down. When the, the war is over, we'll tear them down, and they won't, so you're not just have a bunch of scavenger troops all over the place, okay? So it's very, very smart, but they're very smart too, but this is the smartest thing that we have found, is it extends your life. So what are some of the other benefits of taking HCL? Okay, it's a natural whole body disinfectant. People go, I'm sick, I'm, I need a detox. That's a detox, which is, that's what we call this HCL detox therapy because it detoxes the whole body. The HCL is able to, when it's swallowed, it's then, and the enzymes are able to penetrate all of these cells. And in particular, the HCL is able to go into, let's say your knuckles or the sinuses or your guts, uh, with these things where these polysaccharide sacs have formed and have become like stalactites in there, it's the only thing that can get in there. So it's highly effective, safe, and easy to perform detoxification method using the special natural phytomineral uh, phyto activation of HCL. You activate the HCL with the activator. Now you can take the HCL, uh, all, all, I know some people do that, you know, and even just taking the HCL has some benefit. But like, you know, when you're, there's the epoxy type of thing, which is some glues come in separate containers because when you mix them together, that's what makes the stuff happen. And they have to be separate. And so you can't mix, why isn't it all one tube? Some things have to be separate and mixed fresh because when they get mixed fresh, they then create a, a chemical reaction and it changes its state. So like that epoxy that starts off as both of them are these kind of goo, you mix them together and now it zhoop, freezes into almost like a metal. Well, that's why you want to take the HCL and the, hydrochlor the hydrochloric acid and 
separately from a time with the um, potassium, which is the activator, and then the digest. And there's a procedure of, you know, you take one mid-meal, and then at the end of the meal, I like to do it with the last bite, you take your HCL and your potassium, which is, that's the activator. And they call it activator because it's like that, which is, it's something when it's added to the HCL, now it activates if you want to be chemical about it, or it's what's called the trimethylglycine, and it acts as a remethylator. We're born as a person with X amount of methyl groups. Methylization has to do with, now this is real sciencey, but it has to do with the DNA, it has to do with how much time you got, okay? And the methylization, as long as this cell, your brain, your fingers, your nose, your digestive, every cell has a certain amount of methyl groups, okay? And um, you're born with a certain amount, and you use a certain amount, and then once that cell gets down to a low enough state, when it doesn't have enough, that's when it then has to pull the cord and be done. It has to die, right? So the methyl groups are something that we're using again and again and again. And it would be best to use the least amount, right? If you only got so much, you know, savings, then be cheap as you can every day right? You're up on $5 a day, right? However, it would be great if I could remethylate, meaning if you could have somebody, you know, sugar daddy, <laughs> putting more money into your bank account so that you build up and then you could stay on vacation forever, okay? So that's what the activator does is it, it turns it into a remethylization, which is you actually add more into the tank. Okay, so... What was I saying? Okay, yes. Um, it promotes immune, gastrointestinal, arterial, and whole body cleansing of the health. HCL therapy goes through every single cell in your body, including your brain. Um, promotes purification and deep cleansing of the lymphatic system, especially congested tissue. What's congested tissue? We think congested as your nose, but even a bad shoulder. Ah, I got that frozen shoulder. I've got the, that's congested, congested arteries. Um, if you had the scan done and you got a little bit of, you know, plaque in your deposits and in your throat or in the jugular or the carotid, um, that's congestion and it gets that congestion out. Key rejuvenation sport due to its ability to break biofilms, right? So the only thing that can break the biofilms is the hydrochloric acid. <clears throat> and it's able to then go in there and then deliver other things with it, not only just your immune system, but all that good food that you're eating. Now it can get into, especially through your intestines, because a lot of times people build up a layer. Think about your intestines as tubes of which stuff has to, the food that's inside there has to then leach through and then go into your bloodstream. But also that's where the enzymes have to leach through the other way and go into the food. So if you put a plastic bag on the inside of it, and if you paint over it, then stuff ain't getting in and stuff ain't getting out, right? And that's what this layer of, of, of the, the polysaccharide sacs is they live in there and they live on your food and they steal the food away from you, but then they also block absorption, they block nutrient absorption, they block even the delivery of the enzymes. They don't want your enzymes mixing your food because it doesn't rot. They like rotting food. So why do these things live inside us? Because they like rotting food. They like the rotting stuff and they're drawn to the rotting stuff. So the HCL is able to break those films down. So now we're stripping layers of paint off and now we can absorb the stuff and, and it goes both ways. So um, contains trimethylglycine which restores the methyl groups, as I was saying in the, uh, before, you're born with only so many, um, these methyl groups that become increasingly deficient during the aging process, especially if eating highly heated foods or the standard American diet. We eat everything cooked. That's why eating raw is really good um, because you're able to get raw nutrients. But by the time many people get to raw foods, they're so sick and it doesn't really, not most people, but a lot of people when they try it, after being sick, they get dis disappointed because all their efforts doesn't really work for them or not as good as it should. Well, it has nothing to do with the, still do that, that's a good choice. But it's usually it's this detox and it's cleaning up and they have to have the enzymes. They have to have the hydrochloric acid. 
and has superior anti-aging effects by expressing, expressing healthy genes and suppressing aberrant genes. So when we get enough hydrochloric acid in our system and it's gone through and it's cleaned a bunch of stuff out, it's able to actually even get into the DNA structure of every single cell. And then where we have genes, because see genes inside the system are basically on off switches. There's good things that are supposed to be on and there's bad things that are supposed to be off. So sometimes when we have bad health or bad genetic expression, it's the things that are supposed to be turned off or turned on and the things that are turned on are supposed to be turned off, vice versa, okay? So the cancer genes, the oncogenes, we have all of those. So who gets cancer? People that have these flips switched on, right? So if you have these, and so again, if you have these things that are like, you don't wanna turn that button on, turn that off, put some tape on that one so nobody can turn that one back on. That's when we do what's called gene expression. You wanna express the good ones and suppress, turn on the good ones that are off, turn off the good ones that are on, or the bad ones that are on. Well, how do you know what you're doing? Your body knows what you're doing and the cell knows what it's doing when the conditions are right. When the chemical conditions and mineral conditions are right, it magnetically, how does it know this? And this is the mechanics of DNA, of the DNA, is it's their magnets. They, and when the energy is right, and energy comes through minerals, duh, people go, come on. Well, what's your lithium ion battery? What is, what's running your computer? What's your, it's a lithium ion battery. What's your Tesla car? It's a lithium ion. You keep saying that word. What is lithium? It's a dirt. It's a mineral. I thought just crazy people take that. No, it's a very, very important mineral. And yes, it can be taken internally. And again, high levels of people with bipolarism and, and, and schizophrenia, as well as anxiety disorders are put on lithium. Um, phytochemically bound lithium is better because it's a natural form and it's in still a plant form, so you can't overdose on it. Um, but it fixes people that have a deficiency in that mineral. And if you have a deficiency in that mineral, your brain does not work the, the waves because your brain is just these waves of electromagnetic energy. And so it's basically the cell phone or the, the, um, the TV show. <laughs> I know I'm getting deep, but what is the TV show? What is the radio show? What is the Wi-Fi? It's these, blah, 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 these little things that are going through the air that your, your cell phone or your TV is a receiver. And it pulls this, so where is the show? It's not in the TV, it's not in the radio, it's in the waves, it's out there and it's going through stuff. That's where the information is. So that's where the electromagnetic frequency of your body is, is it's actually in these waves of energy. Well, I know that's kind of deep, but that's how simple it is as to how genes can be turned on or turned off. That's why when a person lives too close to, let's say, a, a cell phone tower or lives too close to a radio tower or a microwave, there's high levels of cancer there. There's high level of cancer, not just if they live close to Chernobyl, if they live close to a transformer. You know, that's why we have code in, in when you build a new building, the electrician or the electrical code, they come in and they check that stuff out. Because if you've got these, you can't see it, you can't feel it, you can't hear it, you can't smell it. And if it's going blah, 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 wobbling through you, same thing as radon. Radon's a gas that you smell, but, but it's, it's this radioactive stuff of these waves. And it's not, it's the smell, it's these waves. So there's good waves and there's bad waves. And what the HCL is able to do is, now it makes you so that you can digest and get the right minerals into the cells. Because when the HCL basically breaks down and kills that infection and opens up the permeability, now these gates, this the calcium channel gates and these other things, the minerals of calcium, potassium, magnesium, all the trace minerals, now these things, iodine, are able to plug in and now your computer works. Just think about these as like there's little computer chips. How does your, how does your computer work? It's the same thing. We are the mechanics of a computer. And on the DNA level, that's the mechanics of how do these things flip on? How do these things connect? And how do the ones that are not in the right place get put back in the right place? And ones that are broken, remend. 
And how do we have at the, like the DNA has what's called telomeres, which is like the little ends that are frayed, like if, you know, the sweater that keeps getting pulled out. So as we age, we lose these telomeres and it, and it gets frayed and, and eventually the DNA falls apart. So grandma and grandpa's falling apart. That's why they look so old and sick and everything is because they're all these things on the genes. Okay. So can you reverse it? Can you go back in time? Yes. And are, is it high level? Do I got to put in some sort of machine. Do I need the med bed? Well, you become the med bed. And HCL is, the, is a biologic living life form, especially when you relate it to what it does with the minerals. And especially potassium being one of these top, top minerals. Got the leg cramps. Oh, it might be potassium, right? Eat some bananas. That's why. That's why. Because the electrical field, when you're having a cramp, it's the electrical field. The electromagnetic field and now the muscle gets stuck on a turned on or fluttering like that and it can't move and it won't let go and it won't let go because it can't get the magnesium because it's stuck with calcium the mechanics of the body but it shows you how important minerals are okay so how do we say anti-aging how do i fix my genes you fix it by you can't get in there and you don't know what you're doing but the chemicals know what they're doing. The minerals know what they're doing. All you got to do is just provide the right, just let me give you the right, you know, give you the right office space and step away and let you do it. You know what you're doing. That's what the body is. So if you provide it the right foods, but again, I don't care if you have the right foods. If you don't have the right digestion, it's not going to get broken down. So HCL. So Here's one of the best things that anyone can do. You try this if you have bad digestion, or if you want to have better digestion, or if you say, I, I digest like a, you know, but I got an iron stomach. I can digest anything, but I'm getting older, I'm getting the wrinkles. I want to live longer. I want to feel better. You try the HCL, okay? So here is the recipe. HCL comes from the Premier Research Labs, this company. Um, you can get it from me. So for individuals age 25 and 50 who weigh at least 100 to 150 pounds, take one to two caps, one or two of the HCL at the end of the meal and take one or two caps about the equal amount of the activator at the end of the meal and drink at least a quarter cup of purified water and take after the meals, after specially cooked meals, one to three times a day. I say do it three times a day. For individuals 25 to 50 who weigh 151 to 200 pounds, you're going to take three to four of the HCL um, after food, and then yeah, and the same thing, which is it, so basically take the equal amount of the HCL and the activator. Okay. Um, yep. So you basically so if you're 25 or say 100 to 150 you're taking one to two if you're 151 to 200 you're doing three to four and then if you're 100 and um 100 to 150 pounds over 50 so anyone older 50 you should take three to four of the um hcl and three to four of the activator with every meal now if you want an extra measure you take the digest before so let's go back to the beginning so average person is, and when you say, well, how many should each person take two, no matter how old you are. So start eating, get a couple bites in you, then take two of the digest, then keep eating, keep eating, keep eating. Then at the end of the meal, if you're at these ages, 25 to 50, you're going to do one to two of the HCL and one to two of the activator, drink it down with a big glass of water. You're done as you get older. So if you're above 50, go for four. You're going to do four of the HCL and then four of the activator. And then that should cause you or create enough of the hydrochloric acid, more than enough. That's actually more than enough. And then you will start digesting better. But especially in this day and age right now, when we're talking about immune, uh, immune, I've had so many people ask me about, well, with this COVID stuff, what should I take? What should I take? Well, you can always go to... What's the simplest, cheapest, and the thing that will actually do more bang for your buck, and, and the thing that, that you could do anytime, even at this time, but what is super effective is having super digestion and getting the HCL in your system. 
You can even safely take the HCL on an empty stomach. So let's say a person has a really bad sinus infection, right? Or has one of these bad teeth that they need to do bone grafting or something like that. Okay, you found out you bad bad tooth. You can take the HCL on an empty stomach. You can take up to 10 HCL. Now, many times it can kind of burn the stomach and you have to build up to it, right? So, but, uh, and then this has been also been used very successfully for Lyme's disease, which is, Lyme's is really, really hard to, to treat. And again, because Lyme's can hide in these biofilms. And so um, the Lyme's um, disease protocol is just not only taking the HCL with your food, but taking like 10 on an empty stomach three to five times a day. You know, people have to kind of build up the tolerance in their stomach, but by the time they get there, they do that for a period of time. I've known so many people who have had the Lyme's disease for years and they did this and they did a whole bunch of things and it didn't work, but that worked. Even the rifing didn't work for them. Um, the HCL therapy did work to get rid of the Lyme's disease. Um, so um, bad digestion is a sign of a, the aging process. And if you keep up with, ah, but you know, I'll be fine. No, you need to change it and because you'll buy yourself more time, but also you need to get healthy. And one of the best ways to be healthy is to, as I say over and over again, it's a hidden thing. And what's behind, like I said, 99% of everything that's an infection and everything that's inside the body, every condition, my feet hurt, my, you know, this or that, I get chronic coughs, I got hay fever, um, you know, my thinking's not that. Give me any condition, anything that you come to me. Oh, I, well, I hurt my elbow playing or my shoulder playing football. What's that got to do with it? You're not healing fast enough. Uh, the cancer, what's that got to do with it? It all goes to what's going on inside your body. And it, and it all starts with that meal, that food. That food is a, that every meal is a meal of life or it's a meal of death. And it's nice to add more life to you. And could you even reverse this and go, I've been going downhill. Can I slow it down, stop it? And can I go backwards? Can I go back in time? Yes, time has to do with the aging of the cell. And as I said, even the genetics of the cell. And you can reverse these things and it knows what it's doing. Your body knows what it's doing. You just give it the right conditions. So this is Jason Eagle, your Natural Health Authority. Until next time, thank you. Bye-bye.